Welcome to The Rich Report, a podcast with news and information on high-performance computing. Today, my guests are from Texas Memory Systems. We have Jamin Bowen, who's Director of Sales Engineering, and Eric Iberg, who's a Senior Analyst with the company. Uh, welcome to the show, guys. Hi, Rich. Thanks for having us. Thank you, Rich. Well, it's, it's a pleasure having you back on the show. Uh, I understand that you guys have some product updates to tell us about. Do you want to tell us more? Absolutely. We have a pretty major product announcement that we're going to get into, and I wanted to go over a little bit of the background of TMS so you understand how this fits in and complements our existing product line. So as you recall, TMS is an old company. We were actually founded in 1978 as an SSD company and have been building high-performance memory-based solutions all of that time. And today we have the world's fastest storage. We're on our 17th generation SSD and have a very wide and broad customer base. And also a history of changing the game by implementing new chip technologies as we shifted from being primarily a RAM-based SSD company to being a flash-based SSD company and having multiple solutions in the market. Now, although we have a lot of different types of products, they are all fundamentally application acceleration solutions. And so we have a, kind of an overview of what types of customers use our products. We have financial, government, e-commerce, high-performance computing, and telecommunication. And these are a lot of applications where the performance of the infrastructure is key to the overall mission that they're trying to accomplish. And so while we have different direct attached, SAN attached, IB attached, SSD systems, they're all really just accelerating applications. So if you take a look at the TMS SSD choices, you have our direct attach in server PCI SSD solution, the RAM SAN 70, and we have our small SAN, RAM SAN 710, that is a, a flash based. SSD as well, and our large SAN, RAM SAN 630, which is also a, an SLC flash system. What we're on the show today to announce is a new product class from R Texas Memory Systems, the RAM SAN 810. And you'll notice that it's not an SLC product. This is an EMLC product. It's an enterprise-grade, multi-level cell flash technology. And this continues our tradition of being able to offer all of the different types of SSD solutions that our customers are interested in. Now, the E in the EMLC is fairly important. That is what enables us to get the Texas Memory Systems reliability to the level that our customers expect. Uh, EMLC is basically in between SLC and MLC in terms of endurance. It has 30,000 write array cycles where SLC is at 100,000, and the latest MLC chips are at 3,000. So it's able to fit in nicely to still provide a lot of endurance, but not really hit the very top that SLC does. And we'll take a look at the RAMSAN 810 on the next slide. So the RAMSAN 810 is a 1U storage appliance. Again, it uses that EMLC flash, it has 10 terabytes of usable capacity. And there's actually quite a bit of flash besides that 10 terabytes that's used for rating of the chips, for over-provisioning, and for handling block fail failures. And with that 10 terabytes, we're able to deliver over 4 gigabytes a second of bandwidth, 320,000 IOs per second, uh, using a fiber channel or an InfiniBand interface to the hosts. And we do all of this in one U using less than 250 watts. And so this is very similar to our RAM SAN 710 that uses SLC flash, but it's able to take advantage of the cost benefit you get with EMLC. Because the other important aspect of why people are interested in EMLC is it's half the price of SLC. And this is just a one U system. What a lot of our customers do in the HPC space is they actually stack multiple RAM SAN chassis. And so to put it in perspective, you can get nearly a half a petabyte of capacity in this system in one rack in a data center. 
So the applications that we're going after with this EMLC product is data warehousing, which doesn't tend to be as write intensive, but is very read heavy and needs all sorts of capacity and performance. Uh, data acquisition, uh, primarily in the DOD space, where the data needs to be acquired once and then analyzed for some period of time. And then a lot of the web content hosting of where it's really a content delivery network where there's some content that needs to be shared and is accessed very heavily, but it's a small subset of the overall content. And really a lot of other applications that are very I.O. intensive but are not just strictly write applications. So to give you a quick review of the other products that we have so you understand how this fits in, we also have the RamSan 70 that we announced earlier this year. That's nearly a terabyte of capacity on a single PCIe card. And that is SLC flash and fits right inside the server with very high performance levels. We also have the RamSan 710. You'll notice that looks exactly like the 810 that we're announcing. And internally, the only difference is the way that the flash on the flash boards is constructed, that it uses EMLC versus SLC. And so that cuts the capacity in half, but it does increase the write endurance quite a bit. And you're able to go a bit faster with SLC because of some nuances at the chip level that, I'm, that we can go into in the Q&A session if you're interested. Next is the RamSan 630. This is the high performance leader from Texas Memory Systems, capable of doing over a million IOPS, 10 terabytes of capacity, has up to 10 QDR and Finiband ports, all in 3U. Now, what's common across all of these systems is the flash controller and the interface that TMS has spent a lot of time designing. We're unique in the industry where we provide a full solution, but it's all developed in-house. And the core of our flash products is our Series 7 flash controller. And this implements a CPU to do the management of the flash translation layer with an FPGA to do the low-level flash communication and implement a high reliability rate across the chips that we can talk about. The nice thing about doing that in an FPGA is that as we develop new technologies, and new features, we're able to roll that out into our existing customers in the field without having to do a complete board replacement. And that's uh, helped quite a bit as we've come out with new features such as our variable stripe RAID. And the variable stripe RAID really is one of the key technologies that allows TMS to get to these very high capacities with flash systems because it allows us to have flash chips fail in place, restripe the data to add data protection back in without requiring maintenance. And it's really important for these systems with hundreds of flash chips inside of them to be able to tolerate an issue without having to result in a real problem in the customer site. And there's quite a bit of ECC protection that we add as well. And we typically go beyond what the manufacturer requires as the minimum as our customers are in the top of the storage requirements. And as I mentioned, the variable stripe rate is very important across products. It's important for our PCIe product where maintenance isn't practical, and it's very important with EMLC where there's a lot of apprehension about using an MLC technology due to the known issues with flash. And really what we've done with our design, since this is our seventh generation flash controller, is we've, rather than just trying to make sure that there's no failures ever, just make sure that failures are handled as easily as possible. So, for instance, in the RamSan 810, there are 400 chips that have up to eight different regions within each chip, and each one of those can fail independently. And what we've seen from our field data from our customers in the field is that Wear out isn't the largest concern. The biggest thing that you have to deal with is these failures of regions in the flash chips. And variable stripe RAID allows us to encounter one of those failures, restripe the data using the remaining elements, using some of the over-provisioned space that we have in reserve, and just keep going. 
so that you don't have to replace a board, you don't have to replace a chip. There's enough extra space to give it an industry-leading life. And so on this product, we're specking it at a 10-year usable life. So going over just overall RAM SAN characteristics so you understand where we fit, we are selling complete solutions. Even on our PCIe solution, it's a system on a board effectively. And we focus on the highest performance SSD options out there. And we, can do, we do that independent of the chips that are available to us as we have RAM SSDs, SLC flash SSDs, EMLC flash SSDs now. And I'm sure you'll see us tackle new chip technologies when they become available. And wide support so that it's easy to integrate our systems into a wide variety of environments. So on just the last additional topics, our biggest focus right now at TMS is uh, improved reliability. As we're getting to higher and higher capacities, there's more and more things that you have to take into consideration as you start having to think about petabyte scale SSDs. You're moving from having the uh, thousands of chips to tens of thousands and just managing that in an appropriate manner. So we have quite a bit of additional error correction, the variable stripe rate, and new products under development that will enhance this even further. And just to return to one topic that's on the top of people's minds when they're thinking about SSDs, is how long does it last? Since we're doing so much capacity and we have our variable stripe arrayed, we're able to bring this EMLC product to the market with a 10-year life. And what that comes down to at the user level is even if you're doing 600 megabytes a second 24-7 for 10 years, that's still under the expected use case. It lets people do a full device cycle up to five times a day for that entire 10-year period. So it's a very exciting product announcement from TMS. And it's always fun when you get to bring something to market that cuts your price in half. And we expect a very wide adoption as we start shipping the product. So, so Jamin, uh, just a question about flash technology. I, I find this, uh, this issue of reliability to be fascinating. Uh, you know, you've gone from, it seems like people are wondering if, if flash is ready for prime time, for enterprise, for mission critical with the, you know, I forget what the normal life of a flash device is, maybe three, four years for the high end kind of thing, to specking this one out at 10 years with the RAID configuration. How would that compare to like a, a disk drive? I mean, you certainly wouldn't expect a disk to last that long, would you? Sure, so that's, a, that's an interesting way to position it, because I wouldn't say that there's a natural wear out limitation of the drive of the disk drives that people worry about, it's more of a randomly distributed, like head crash type of event. Sure. And the problem is that you lose all of the capacity at the same time, right? And yeah. so that's where most storage technologies have kind of evolved, is that there's huge chunks of capacity that are taken off at once. And just because the disks are focused on being cheap, they don't have to be as reliable because you can have lots of them. So with the SSD side of it, you don't have to lose that much capacity. A chip is the size of a postage stamp, and inside of the chip are multiple components that have different failure domains. And so the biggest kind of thought process change is that you're dealing with a much smaller element, and if you try and fit it into the existing setup, you end up not working properly in, uh, or in the best case maintenance domains. So where I, I think a lot of the endurance questions are really to make people feel comfortable, just the way that technology works and the way that pricing moves forward, I don't think people are going to be using the product for 10 years. It's just that you, you can, and you don't want to have to worry about having to replace it near the end of uh, the typical three-year cycle. So from a manufacturer, you need to be able to build a device that eliminates that as a concern. And what kind of RAID are we talking about? Is it RAID 0, RAID 5, software RAID? What does that look like? So I'll let Eric turn to that. 
So looking at the architecture of our variable stripe RAID, it is very similar to a RAID 5 approach. So we have a uh, RAID across chips in the boards of the system, where it's 9 plus 1, meaning that we have 9 data chips and then one parity chip. But where it differs from RAID 5 is that we can change the stripe size on the fly and we can also remap certain sections of the RAID so that if we experience a failure, we can restripe the data, potentially turn it into an 8 plus 1 RAID, and then pull in some of our over-provisioned space to, take, to make up for it, basically. And Eric, does that give you any kind of performance advantage when you're striping like that, or is it strictly about reliability? Well, there is a performance aspect to it, but really our goal there is reliability. The way you get performance out of flash chips is you write to lots of them at a time, so you'll see that across many flash chip designs, but our variable strike rate is really all about reliability. Terrific. And um, I rem you had a spec there for the, uh, let's see, it was, uh, sorry for a second, reading my notes. Um, the, the power consumption on this it seems to be a lot lower than one might expect for a comparable, um, like a, a disk RAID solution. It, are customers uh, coming to you and, and are, are they liking that as far as the, the, the power footprint of this? Oh, absolutely. The uh, power footprint is almost a side benefit that just enables you to have operational cost savings. And it matters a great deal to a certain subset of customers that are out of space and out of power. Because you're able to put in so much performance, you can displace racks and racks of disk drives. And I imagine you're, you're producing a lot less heat as a result of not using that power in the data center. No, that's absolutely right. So that's where 250 watts were under in one U, it's less than what a server draws. So the normal data center is already ready to use it. The real benefit is being able to get that type of performance out of that small of a package. Because you can scale that up, right? If you have a 42U rack, you can have 42 units, and you're able to start going at hundreds of gigabytes a second, where that's just not practical with this. Yeah. So kind of a wrap-up question here, guys. You, you've been making SSDs for a long time with the old uh, um, RAM-based. What kind of advantage do you think that gives you in the marketplace now with, uh, with flash technology, that kind of experience? Sure. Really what it helps us is that we have a lot more experience with the way that people use SSDs. And there's a lot of confusion in the market about what's safe, how you can deploy them, and what you need to do. On our RAM business, Develop, allowed us to develop these high performance backplanes and interfaces to share the capacity at the speeds that SSDs run at. And RAM's faster than flash, so it's been able to enable us to use that base technology that we've developed with these new capacity points that are now possible and deliver the shareable performance in a tightly coupled system that just puts us way ahead of the game. Because that's where, again, going back to it, with a 1U product that's doing more than 4 gigabytes a second of bandwidth, that's impressive in and of itself. The typical model outside of that would have some head unit that had a whole bunch of capacity behind it and didn't run it anywhere near that performance. So our background of making RAM systems with that tightly integrated subsystem enables us to bring industry-leading performance to the flash arena. Well, terrific. Well, hey, guys, I want to thank you once again for coming on the show today. Thank you. You Always bet. Always a pleasure. All right. Well, we'll keep up with you guys. That's it for the Rich Report, folks. Stay tuned for more news and information on high-performance computing.